Now that we wash them, we'll take them fresh to the shop for our customers. So what's good about these? They're, they're nice and creamy today. They're, they're really good condition. They're beautiful oysters. two different species of oysters. The beautiful Sydney rock oyster and this oyster here. It's known by two or three different names. Angazis or native oyster or, or drift oyster. 
it's quite different. It tastes different. It looks really? different. It looks. That looks good. When you see the most beautiful sight, so beautiful, so beautiful. This is where how Steph goes to work every morning. You know how Daddy goes downstairs to the computer? Steph, he goes in his boat and he goes up to his farm. This is his farm up here. He farms in the river, his oysters. This is what he does every morning. He probably hates it. But I it's love it. Oh, you love it? Oh, I love it. The, the only thing I'm not very good in is camera business. Ah, oh, don't worry about that. Manual's good, right? Manual's very Manual's good. Manual's good. That's all you've got to worry about. All right. Right? Yeah. So what are we going to do, Andrew? We're going out to, go to uh, do a little bit of cooking with some fresh oysters. With Clyde River oysters, you know, beautiful, best oysters in the world. Arguably, the best oysters in the world, in my opinion they are, anyway. Um, What's your authority? Best oysters in Australia, so that's got to make them the best oysters in the world. Because, we, you know, look. From the farmer's paddock, my mouth. That's good. It's better than that, isn't it? Oh, much better. Perfect. Perfect. Shouldn't have watched them in anything else. And of course, the star of the show being our friends, the prime Clyde River oyster. Oysters natural. Cocktail sauce. Lemon wedges. Fresh bread. In the preparation of oysters, we're going to do two methods. First, we're going to do the sauterne and cucumber and sour cream wash. Secondly, I'm going to do a version of Kilpatrick oysters. And this is what I call oyster punt Kilpatrick because we don't have a griller. But I'm going to show you. We're going to keep the oysters fresh. I'm going to cook off a bit of bacon, top them off. And that keeps everybody happy, even those people who can't eat raw oysters. And of course, we don't really want to foster people eating oysters because it's if everybody eats the oysters, there won't be enough for us. Well, I'll just get this going while I prepare the wash for the oysters on the sauterne. First we're going to start with the, the cucumber. Just clean them off a little bit, get rid of the greens. You can leave a little bit of dark green on there, adds a bit of colour, cut the end off. Then all we're going to do is a very quick grating of the cucumber. What we want is that fine pulp. This fine pulp is what we're looking for so that we can push, wash the oysters in this with the sauternes. Okay, so I'll just prepare the rest. Part of this is secret ingredient. Something, of course, you can't do unless you're in the Clyde River or by the Australian coastal waters because something that's unique to Australia is pure water. Now, normally I will put salt in, okay? Sea salt. But now I'm just going to use a bit of sea water. Some sauternes, a splash of wine. What's sauternes? Sauternes is a dessert wine. It's a wine that's slightly higher sugar content. The grapes are picked a lot later, so the wine is very sweet, and then it's matured slightly differently so that, uh, so that it has a more syrupy sweetness to it. Most people eat them with desserts, but of course, this is a great thing, we'll see. Okay, so now we've prepared the, the sea water, cucumber, and sauterne wash. Very simple, just a slight mix. Make sure we get a little bit of everything in that and just spoon a little bit onto the oyster. Doesn't need much else than that. Very simple. As that spoon's on, I'll tell you what's a good trick. Instead of sauternes, if you don't have sauternes, if you don't drink it, crack a bottle of bubbly. Drink it on the Saturday night. And on the Sunday morning, leave the dregs of the bubbly to make this. Tastes fantastic. So, after we've done that, we're going to put a little bit of sour cream on. Now, these oysters are so fabulous, they probably don't need a creaminess added to it, which is what this tiny dollop of sour cream will do, because generally the oysters aren't as good as this, but of course I'll stick to the recipe and I'll still put a teeny little dollop of cream on, because it does look great. Now, let me finish that off. The final touch we're going to do to our oysters, which don't really need much, but a little finish, some fresh and uh, of 
course. Another oyster favourite. And the final touch. Yep. Sprinkle a few caviar eggs on. As much for look as for a bit more luxury. And this is where you serve the champagne. Okay, from the chef's hands back to the farmer's mouth. They look terrific. Have a taste, see what you think. Ugh. I hope I haven't uh, adulterated too much. Mm, beautiful. Good? Terrific. Say no more. Mm. Say no more. Mm. What a you can't yourself? get a better reference than, the, than, the, than, than the maestro himself. Have another one. I, mean, I like to see that look on your face of oh. enjoyment. Nothing pleases a cook more. Especially when the grower eats the product that's been prepared with such this joy. Is, this is terrific. Thanks, Steph. This is good. Thanks. Mm. Okay, now I'm going to do Oysters Kilpatrick, but like you've never seen before. And I'm going to call these, you know how you go to all these restaurants around the world and they all do these versions of Kilpatrick, or they do this version of that, or they do this version of this. Well, I'm going to do a version of Oysters Kilpatrick, and I'm going to call it Oyster Punt Kilpatrick. And the difference is, we don't bake the oyster, we don't grill the oyster. We use the fresh oyster, and we cook off some bacon, and I'll show you how I do that. A few spoonfuls on, a bit like the uh, oyster wash with the sauternes and then we serve it as it is like that, with a spoon of the hot crispy bacon on the cold creamy oyster. Much better than any Kilpatrick you'll ever try in any restaurant. All right, first we're gonna cook up a bit of olive oil from the ass. Throw it in the pan. And the reason why I do that is because it gets the bacon crispy. Of course, bacon is pretty fatty, but like with all good food, Point two, we don't really worry about fat, okay? We eat it, it's good, and throw the bacon in. Let it get a good sizzle up. Just going to drain this off and I'll put it back in the pan and I'll finish it off in the pan. You can get a shot of that if you want. So why are you draining it off? Oh, it's really fatty bacon there. It's just too much fat. You need oil to get it crunchy. So we get it a nice crispy mixed texture. Splash of Worcestershire. And because I can, I'm going to put some sauterne in this, just for, because I can. And you don't have to, traditionally it's just with the shoe sauce. But of course this is a new tradition because we're cooking them on the Clyde River. And we'll just bring it onto the plate. And there's what a lot of people think Oysters Kilpatrick is, just bacon. There's actually oysters underneath oysters, Kilpatrick. Instead of the traditional method where we top with the raw bacon, put them under the griller and grill them off, cooking the oyster and harsh shriveling it, this way that I've just discovered, and I'm gonna serve oysters, Kilpatrick, like this forever, is the best way. Because that natural oyster is still natural underneath lemon juice. Look at that. Simply. Now, sometimes I uh, like to zip these up. There's a little bit of my old favourite, wasabi, just for the brave. Just as a kick on the after palate. And if they don't like Kilpatrick oysters, I definitely might like them after this. So after our experience on the oyster punt, today we have our cucumber and sauterne washed oysters. Our oysters a la punt Kilpatrick. And of course my favourite, oysters on ice with good old fashioned lemon juice, cocktail sauce, and a bit of crunchy bread. Yeah, in all the years that I've, my father's come to the Clyde River and he's taken me to this Greek oyster farmer and that Greek oyster farmer and here, and he did all this story, we always got our oysters. 
open. We never got them closed. What, what about so that? in all these years, I've never learned how to open an oyster properly. So I'm going to get Steph to treat me, show me, you know, teach me the, the proper way to do this so I can teach others. Is that all right? Yeah, I'll try to. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to cut myself. I'm very scared of blood, especially my own, all right? Opening oysters, it's easy. The only thing, you've got to take your time. We usually open oysters from this side. Oysters got a muscle on the top shell and on the bottom shell, where they feed. We break the top shell on the top of the muscle. It's always the same place. Hold knife firm and move oyster, move left hand. Holding firm knife, I cut the bottom muscle. And then I'm cutting the top muscle. I'm breaking the top shell, cutting the bottom muscle. Now, I flipped it over and I'm cutting the top muscle, top lid. And the most important thing when you open oysters professionally is not to have any muscle left on the shell. That's, that's very important. I'm cutting the bottom muscle, flipping oyster over, cutting top lid. I've travelled a lot of places in the world, not as many as I'd like, not as many as Anthony Bourdain, but in my opinion, I've eaten a lot of these. These oysters aren't even arguably, they are the best in Australia, which makes them, by my scorecard, the best in the world. They don't come better than this. Why don't they come better than this? Have a look at this. I've been standing here cooking in heaven. We Pull the water out of the water here to wash the oysters in to put into the sauternes. Before I was pulling and dipping an oyster in the, while the boat was going and eating the oyster. I mean, where else can you do that? I mean, I, I've got Discovery Channel. There's not many pristine waters left in the world. I live here. I'm so lucky. And I am a local, by the way, because my newborn daughter was born here not three weeks ago. So that makes me an official local. <laughs> Yeah, this is a wonderful thing we have in this estuary. Yeah, this, this is a wonderful thing. We've got this national park around this, this estuary. S Sydney rock oysters, they can't grow in any environment. They've got to gr grow in unspoiled waters. You, you can't grow Sydney rock oysters anywhere. The, the water has to be pristine. It's got to be natural. It's a beautiful river. It's um, it meets the Tasman Sea, and then it meets the, you know, the Clyde Mountains. It's it's beautiful place to grow oysters, and I hope it stays like that. That's our biggest concern. Is it natural? Yeah, if, yeah. Everything everything is natural. Yeah. That that's the wonderful thing about this product we grow. We can't we can't induce it. We can't we can't feed it, or we can't we can't do nothing to it. We just gotta let nature take. You know, we've got to look after it like we got to, you know, we've we got to handle the oysters. You just can't put them in the water and just leave them. You just got to farm them, you know. You've got to pick them up, make them all single and get them, get them ready for the customers. I mean, the, the oysters, they, they do re really well here. And um, we're very confident with, with our product because of the, because of the nature here. We haven't got industry in this river. We haven't got farmlands, dairies, or things like that. We, we um, so far, not not many people live on the river, and it w would, I think it's going to stay like that for many years to come. And the oysters, in the warmer months, they, they swim and they get caught on the infrastructure we put for them. You see this? There's a lot of like microscopic here. You see, like like a how they are. This, this, this is a Nosta here, where I got the coin. It's really bl black spot here. You see, you see this black spot underneath that coin there? There's barnacles, but that's, that's a Nosta next to it. And that's a $2 coin. And it will take probably three years before that product can go to the consumer. 
to my customers. So that's a little oyster. This one here is a barnacle, the, the, this barnacles. But there's, there's approximately six dozen on, on the sticks, six to eight dozen, because it's everywhere between them. You see that? Like this, that's an oyster. That's a little oyster. Hey, we're just picking up these sticks to have a look. They're a year and a half old. And they're, they're doing actually quite well this year. Uh, they look very healthy. Dude. You can hear it. You can hear it. You hear that? That's full grown. It's, yeah, it's, it's a beautiful lifestyle, isn't it? It's, it's hard work, but it's, it's a lovely, you know, beautiful place. You, you, you're on the water every day. It's, it's, it's a good place. When you Julia. see I wouldn't change it for the world. The most beautiful sight. <laughs> So beautiful So beautiful